Eight-five kilos, go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, very good. I, I have a good copy of you. Hey, right now I do have a good copy of you, no problem whatsoever. If maybe the conditions change. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm going to uh, show you a few things on this uh, flex. I've kind of shut it down with the little start button right here, but I'll crank it up in a minute and uh, kind of show you some of the controls. And let's see how this uh, turns out. It's kind of a different way to record. I'm recording off the webcam right now. Uh, my voice, but uh, actually I'm uh, capturing the entire screen using live stream uh, and capturing the audio from uh, the software across the virtual cables. So it's kind of a strange uh, way to do it, but uh, let's see if it works. Anyway, let's crank up uh, Flex Radio again. This is a Flex 3000, and we're going to crank it up. And I'm going to try to explain some of these controls to you. Let me uh, find a signal real quick, and I'll turn the volume down. Here's one. Apparently, this guy's from Guatemala. And let me uh, kind of uh, turn down the volume a little bit with this control right here. We can kind of cut the volume down a little bit so you might be able to pick me up. It's got some neat controls on it. A noise reducer button right here. A noise blanker in case you've got some kind of electrical signals uh, coming in. A noise reducer. I do find that it's the noise reducer is a little too aggressive and I normally don't use it. I just leave it there and I try to narrow the bandwidth uh, to remove as much noise. And also use this what's called an AGCT control over here on the left hand side. Works kind of like RF gain on an old uh, normal radio, you know, a regular radio or an old tube radio that had RF gain on it, some of the newer ones, and you can turn down the gain and basically reduce a lot of the noise if you set it in the right position. I found that around the 70 numbers, 74, 69 uh, to 78, kind of reduces the noise level, and uh, then you can turn up the volume using this control. See? And it kind of blanks out the uh, noise in the background, but uh, you can hear the voices coming through. <coughs> and right now we've got uh, some what seems to be South American stations on. Uh, you can't hear the fellow that's talking right now. He's propagation's not uh, between here and, and between me and him, it's not very good, but there's another fellow in there that we can help hear pretty, pretty good. Here's another signal over here. We're going to go over there and try to get it. And we're going to broaden the... Uh, we're going to broaden the uh, bandwidth a little bit. And then we'll cut it back down again. And he's at uh, 14.178, probably. There he is. He's tying up a, uh, um, a strain relief to hold the... Uh, now we can kind of knock out some of his uh, bandwidth just by moving this filter right here. And, of course, you can move the entire filter across... His well, signal. Here we go. No, 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 no. Are we living in the old home? 
Uh, or they have some settings down here at the bottom uh, in kilohertz that you can just select. So here's 2.9 kilohertz wide, 3.3. Notice that I'm picking up some of this noise out here. So let's narrow that bandwidth a little bit and we reduce some of this noise that's over on the side of his signal. And here's another signal. Let's scoot on down there. And let's reduce this AGCT gain a little bit. And it cleans up the signal real well. To jump around the bands, uh, here's your band chart kind of up here. You can select different bands and it moves right to them. I'm going to go to 40 right now. I'm on 20 meters right now. Let's go to 40. <coughs> Notice that it's automatically selected the lower side band too right here. Automatically selected that. So a good signal on 40. I haven't even tuned it up on 40 yet. It's tuned to 20 meters right now. And here's a big signal over here. Let's listen to this guy for a minute. He's got a pretty big signal when he comes back. And we'll even try... Uh, they've got two preamps. I'm on preamp one right now. Let's try preamp two. Oh, in this particular band, they only have one available. And uh, I was just passing through. I, I grew up in Iowa and um, ended up living in Kansas for a while. And um, Real good audio. I mean, excellent. I don't know if you can tell this. They've got a speaker function called BIN BIN. Kind of combines the signals, and it looks like uh, it's in stereo, sort of, when you click it. So here we go. I don't know if you'll be able to tell this on the recording or not, but that's this little button here. I do not miss that weather at all. Uh, in the middle of winter here, it's uh, shirt sleeve weather. So, yeah, I love it here. And it's got a good signal meter right up here on the top. <laughs> He's hitting me with a 5.9 signal right now. And uh, you also get a, uh, a DB signal uh, along with it at the top here. It's got a bunch of other meters that you can select. Different meters. Okay, but I usually leave it on mic just so I can uh, see what my signal is like. And then for the receive part, it's got a bunch of selections there too, like an average signal or a regular signal. You know, so I usually don't mess with these. I leave them on signal or mic. Uh, it's got a real neat digital function. You don't need any kind of uh, extra gear. You don't need any kind of extra gear to do digital. All you have to do is select this uh, di digital upper band, upper side band, or lower side band right here. So let's go to digital upper side band. Let me, and I'm gonna check and make sure it's still recording once I skip over there. So I, you're gonna see me pop up a meter. 
All right, so we just switched, and I am still recording. Let me kind of adjust that a little bit. All right, and let's uh, let's jump over to, and I'm going to type this in, 14.070, and there we are on 20 meters where the digital signals happen to be, and I'm going to select uh, 3 kilohertz wide. There we go. And now we need uh, something to decode them with, so uh, we're going to open up FL Digi. right here and get the signal browser right there and you can see the uh, signals on the waterfall okay and in a moment it'll start decoding them and there it goes starting to decode now I'm gonna close this window I'm gonna leave that one open along with the uh, power SDR meter, just so I can see the band there that we're on and the signals, the raw signals coming in on the radio. And I'll open up that uh, signal browser again so you can see it uh, decoding those signals. Now remember, I don't have a signal link or a rig blaster or anything like that. It's all built into the Flex 3000. So you can do... Uh, digital modes of all types uh, without any additional hardware. Just uh, plug and play. You do need to install some software, either FL Digi or DigiPan or Ham Radio Deluxe or something to decode the signals. That's a little bit geeky on setting it up because you have to select the correct virtual cable. Remember, um, there's really only one cable coming out of the back of this thing into the computer. It's a firewire cable. And uh, that's it. So the rest of the cabling is all virtual inside the computer. So I'll set up a virtual cable, uh, you know, for the sound and a virtual cable for the COM port using two programs. Uh, the COM port I'm using is uh, via, let me see, VSL Manager. I believe that's right. Let me kind of drop these down for a second and I'll check it for you. Yeah, VSP Manager. VSP Manager. VSP MGR. You can Google that. And you're going to go to a site. And if you have a license and you give the fellow your call sign, he will allow you to download this software for free. And I think it's uh, better than the other one that's out there that Flex recommends, which is com o com com o com uh, that, That's the other one, but it's really, I don't think it's as good as this VSP Manager because uh, it installs automatically. You don't have to run what they call a test install to uh, uh, you have to do that with Comocom to get it to install but you don't have to with this VSP manager then the other thing that I had to uh, load up was the uh, audio cables uh, and they're called uh, virtual audio cable or VAC VAC and it's a pay to play it's going to cost you about $30 to uh, get that software, uh, but that's the one that uh, uh, Flex recommends. That's the one I installed. So I'm using the virtual audio cable, and in the software, it's just referred to as VAC, VAC. So let's go back to the Flex again right here. It's still working. Open up our uh, signal browser. Here's a fella, EK44RO. That's a strange call sign. It's in Guatemala. And we've got a KK6TV saying it's much better that time. 
So anyway, uh, text messaging for ham radio operators. That's what this is. There is no internet. If you're watching this video, there is no internet. These messages are all coming in over the radio from basically all over the world. If propagation is good. And the neat part about digital is you don't need a lot of uh, watts to transmit a long way. I usually use uh, somewhere between 35 and 40 watts tops. Uh, and basically I've made contacts as far as New Caledonia, which is uh, off the coast of New Zealand on 35 watts. So pretty neat uh, way to operate a ham radio is to get into the digital modes and here comes a whole bunch of mess messages scrolling across the screen and of course if you click any of these lines you go directly to the frequency that that person is on so you could uh, watch the message as soon as he gets done with his call you could make a call to that person once he finishes that particular conversation Pretty neat mode. And of course, here's the other half of uh, FL Digi. Once you click a message, it starts decoding in the window here. And in this bottom window, you can type a message and uh, send it back to, to that person. And there's what they call macros down here where you have pre typed messages already typed. And all you have to do is click it and make a call. I'm going to do that right now and demonstrate it. So here's the frequency ranges that you're in. And all you do is pick a spot where there's no transmissions. So there I am. There's, there's nobody transmitting around me. So I'm going to call CQ by clicking this button right here. And there we go. I'm transmitting uh, CQ right now at about uh, at about 40 watts going out right now it looks like on the meter and there it is it just transmitted uh, CQ from W1XWX in Texas and then I basically said I'm waiting for you to answer me back so that's how uh, you do text messaging uh, with a radio. So let's shut this down and uh, let's see if we can find some CW or Morse code. Here's one. All right, now what we're going to do is there's a special CW mode, CW lower sideband or upper sideband. So we're going to go to the upper sideband and get this signal right here. Now let me make sure my mixer is still working, and it is. And you can just narrow this down to incredible. Here's one uh, kilohertz, 800, 750. Notice the bandwidth is smaller, narrower, narrower. You can just narrow right in onto that signal. and basically eliminate all the noise that may be around it or if there's a bunch of CWs uh, being transmitted right next to one another you can just cut them right out of there and just listen to the one that you want to listen to got pretty good tone notice how clean the filters are no a ringing Pretty neat. So let's go back to the upper side band again. And we're going to swing on up to 14.225 and see what else is happening here. Let's see. Let's just get one more signal here and then we'll call it quits. The Guatemalans are still talking. And it looks like 20 meters 
has just about gone away for the evening. There's the signal. Well, what did I do? I must have punched the wrong number in there. All right, 14240. Let's see where this fellow is talking from. He's got a pretty good signal. There's another good one right over here. Well, right, let's go over here. And let's give him a chance to come back. And then we're going to. You know, um, in California, uh, when I left the one house and I had the amp station there. Notice how I can alter the, this filter. You know, in the walls and stuff, and I had to have it picked up and take the electrical out. It was $100 an hour, over it. All right, well, that gives you a great idea of uh, some of the functions of this. I haven't gotten into the mic at all. Like, I had to get a ham on the radio to help me set up my microphone properly. That's all these controls down here. And I am using receive uh, uh, equalizer and transmit equalizer. Let me show you those real quick. It's got a three-band equalizer on receive and on transmit, but it also has a ten-band. Okay, a little too much for uh, old Joe. So I'm using three-band, and apparently I sound real good when it's set like this when I transmit. I had some hams help me adjust these. Uh, low, medium, and high uh, equalization to uh, make the little hand-held microphone sound pretty good. They said I sounded pretty good, so uh, I've left it like that. And it also has a preamp that I set, set at the same time. And here's the receive part, so let's play with that a little bit. And uh, we'll see how we can change it up a little bit. That's right. I, I don't have a sign. Uh, I, I uh, get so much money an hour uh, or a flat rate uh, doing a show. And, uh, you know, uh, that's where it is. Okay, Sam, take care. I'm going to run in the house. Uh, uh, the wife said we both worked out in the gym today. We Sounds pretty good right there. So you really don't need a mixer board or anything like that. It's got a built-in equalizer, and it's just as good as my old analog mixer board. Anyway, with that said, I wish you clear skies, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. And see you on the radio, too. Y'all be good. See y'all later.